This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Satan just laughing. I finally got a platform to execute whatever I want to execute on the planet because they're ignorant of my operation. And Christian people can't be ignorant. You are the righteousness of God. You have a covenant of God. Great Life 2020 featuring Creflo Dollar, Taffy Dollar, Michael Smith, Gregory Dickow, and Andrew Womack. Come see what God's got to tell you. It's eye open, it's heart open, it's just life changing experience. Don't miss it. We've been to every one of them, don't miss it. Join us as we bring you Grace Life 2020. To register now, text Grace Life to 51555 or visit us at creflodollarministries.org. to the book of Job chapter 3 and 25. We do not have to be subject to fear. Say out loud, I do not have to be subject to fear. In fact, the choice is entirely up to you. Just because fear is present, you don't have to be subject to it. The choice is entirely up to you. While fear and terror may be on the rise in the world and may even try to come against us, they are powerless against persons who has confidence in God's word. And it keeps it at the forefront of his or her thinking at all times. When you get the Word of God and you keep it at the forefront of your thinking at all times, then fear is powerless against you. It's, it's, it's not what you're thinking about. It's not what you're focused in on. Whatever you give your attention to is what will become a large part of your life. It becomes large. It becomes big in your life. What are you attending to the most? It becomes big in your life. Listen, if you keep going home every day and spending five hours a day listening to the news, talk about the virus, that's going to become big in your life. And it's going to start terrorizing you. It's going to become big in your life. All right, so you know about it. You understand it. Praise the Lord. But does that mean, let me get the latest update. It's... it's Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you allow fear to dominate your thinking by giving attention to your fears, those things will actually increase in your mind and in your heart. But if you never counteract those ne negative thoughts and feelings with the Word of God, they will begin to frame the way you see things and ultimately begin attracting the very thing you are afraid of. They will keep you in bondage and torment you day and night. And fear is an absolute disruption of the peace of God desires for every Christian who walks in this peace, fear wants to disrupt it. It wants to cancel the peace in your life. So we have to make a decision to keep our minds focused on what God says all the time. So your spiritual battle is, I've heard clearly what they say, now let me go and focus on what God says. I heard, because if you don't, you, you, listen, some of you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you will just be, you, 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 you ain't even coming out of the house. <laughs> and fear will introduce new fears. I got a fear of an epidemic, and I got a fear I'm going to be able to pay my bills, and I got a fear that, uh, you know, I'm not going to be able to have money to do this, and I got a fear of, you know, this, and then another fear coming up, and then I got to go get me some bullets because I'm fearing people are going to come in, and, and I got to go into self-preservation, which is based in fear, and then I move from self-preservation to base, based in fear to now I'm, I'm, wor I'm worried about, if, you know, God said he'll take care of me. I'll supply all your needs according to your riches and glory, but then fear says, uh, it's doubt that. Uh, uh, fear says, don't believe that. Do you really believe God's going to take care of you? And you're going through all of this, and you ain't even left the house. 
And besides all of that, one of the greatest ways to lower your immunity is to start worrying and get stressed out. Yep. Yeah. Wake up. Look at Job 325. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Job even knew, I got, I got to stay away from fear. Because fear is the faith of the devil. Fear is the faith of the devil. Fear tolerated will contaminate your faith. And he said, the thing I was greatly feared, that's what's come upon me. And that the thing that I'm afraid of, man, that's, that, I see it right now. I remember when I had this fear of, of my wife going out alone. We had just moved to New York, and she's catching cabs. And I'm like, where are you? Oh, I just took a cab, and I just went down to Macy's, and I'm like freaking out, like, I'm not with you. Like, I'm, like I can protect her more than God. And my wife ain't never been that kind of folks to announce I'm doing this and follow. It's like, I'm there. Where you at? And I remember that day specifically, the Lord spoke to me. He says, if you don't get your fear under control concerning your wife, you may, you may one day have to accept some of the responsibility for what happens in her life. And I said, Lord, forgive me. And from that point on, I'm like, uh-uh. And every time I'd sense it coming on me, I'd fight against it. How did I fight against it? I'd open my mouth and I'd say, the angels of God watch over my wife, and God loves her much more than I do, praise God, so she's in good hands, praise the Lord. And I'd have to speak to myself to let that fear know you cannot enter in and have place in my thinking all is well. Well, that came from a fear of a relative of mine who went to get some uh, some stuff from the store and never came back and ended up dead in the trunk of a car. I never dealt with that. And you have to deal with those things in your life that, that continue to be, uh, you, you know, something that will propel fear in your life. It's not okay. I had to come to the place and say, it is not okay. I'm not dealing with it from a therapeutic uh, uh, sense. Well, you know, everybody has a little fear, ha, ha, ha. It ain't okay. It ain't okay. I'm a believer. It's not okay. I know more than the world knows. So I'm not going to do that. Well, I got a fear of getting on the elevator at the Peachtree Plaza when they first built it, and it was the elevator on the outside. I'm like, I ain't getting on that thing. <laughs> and I decided that's a fear. I'm going to have to deal with that. If I don't deal with that little seed of fear, it'll come back and deal with me. I had to get on that elevator, and I stood as close to the, to the window as I possibly could. And, 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 and I'm like, uh-uh, I, 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 I will not do it. And I'm fine now, but I had to deal with that fear. I had a fear of flying, so I took pilot lessons. And you, in, a, in the first course of pilot lessons, you have to do a stall. That's when you take a 172 up, and uh, then you, you do a stall and, 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 and hold the nose up as far as it comes, and then the engine goes off. Some of y'all say, hallelujah. <laughs> And then that thing fly, and the instructor the whole time says, trust the laws, trust the laws. And I said, come on, Jesus, come on, Jesus, come on, Jesus. <laughs> then he just said, chum, chum, chum. And I said, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but I have to deal with every seed of fear or it will grow and deal with me. Fear is not okay. Say that out loud. Fear is not okay. A fear-filled mind will believe the ideas and the lies of the, of the enemy. And when people try to put fear in you through their actions or their words, show Satan you mean business by refusing to move from your stance on God's Word. Fear comes up, comes up you stand on God's Word. Fear comes up, you quote, you say out loud God's Word. You stand on it no matter what. So that means you're going to have to watch your words, Amen. When you're, when you're fighting fear, watch your words. Look at Proverbs 18, 21. Now, we've taught from Proverbs 18, 21 that before you are concerned about saying the right words, make sure you believe what Jesus has already done. They believed and they also spoke. We believe and we also speak. 
And so our speaking comes from what we believe. We believe in Jesus and we believe in the finished works of Jesus Christ. What does he say here? He says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So the worst thing you can do in a pressure situation where fear-filled emotions are trying to overwhelm you, the worst thing you can do is to speak negatively and agree with the fear you feel on the inside of you. That's the worst thing you could do. I guarantee you the number one conversation in the world today is, what do you think about that virus? What do you think about everything that's going on? And I'm talking about, I, I, I want to talk about what do you think about how fear is tricking everybody? And what are the consequences for operating in the ignorance of fear and not understanding what happens when you become the source of promoting fear? I understand information, but what happens when you become the source of promoting fear? What are the consequences? What are the domino effects when you, when you look up one day and the virus is all gone, but now there's an epidemic of fear? How you deal with that? Well, I don't know if I believe. Well, you better hurry up and figure it out. Because this thing is becoming very, very simple. God or Satan, heaven or hell. And you go around talking about what you believe and what you don't believe. I tell you what, you keep walking in that fear and let something get you and then you die. Your whole doctrine going to change. This is a serious time right now. Locusts invading the earth. Crops being ate up, epidemic worldwide, fear, Satan just laughing. I finally got a platform to execute whatever I want to execute on the planet because they're ignorant of my operation. And Christian people can't be ignorant. Amen. You are the righteousness of God. You have a covenant of God. Proverbs chapter 4, 23. Look at this. Guard your mind. Guard your mind. Why? Verse 23 says, keep, that word keep means guard. Keep your heart with all diligence. Why? For out of it are the issues of life. The issue of life. The issues of your life. Another translation says the forces of your life. So it says guard your heart. For out of your heart comes the issues of life. Your issues come out of your heart. So if you're going to guard your heart, you've got to guard your eye gate, your ear gate, and your mouth gate. Whatever gets in your heart comes through your eyes, your ears, and your mouth. What are you watching? What are you hearing? What are you saying has the potential of entering into your heart? And the issue of your life comes out of your heart. How, how many more sick people are we going to have as a result of the issue that came out of their heart? How many folks are going to contain some kind of crazy disease because of the stress and the pressure of fear? I tell you, boy, the government need a preacher. Yes. That know the word. What are the, what's the domino effect? What's the domino effect? You know, when, when people go to the doctor and they hear that they have cancer, in some cases the cancer doesn't kill them. It's the stress of it. Yeah. They end up dying of a heart attack or something else. That's what I'm trying to get people to see. I am not against your little practical things you do. But you, you got to get the fear under control. They're creating a, what, what do they call that? A, something to come back. The virus, a vaccine. And Jesus gave you a vaccine against fear. The Word of God is your vaccine against fear. And in this case, you don't have to take a dose of fear in order to get rid of fear. Right. 
for we walk by faith. What we meditate on in abundance will eventually overtake and overwhelm our lives. What are you meditating on in abundance? Look at 2 Corinthians 10, 5. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Some say, what y'all doing today at church? I'm trying to get you drunk on the Word. I want you to so full of the Word when you walk out of here this morning, you're going to walk out like a giant, like, what's up? What's up? You're going to like, you want some of me? Come on. You, you, you want some of me? You want some? Bam, shut up. You want some of me? Now, this is not a person we're doing that to. It's, it's fear that we're doing that to. <laughs> Go home. We, we arrested many people from world changes because they went out and start, just start slapping people. You remember that movie with Bernie Mac going down there? Yeah. The thing, he's just slapping people. Bam. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5. Now, watch this. How do I combat the fear thought? In other words, I'm watching the news and these thoughts of fear are just in my head and I'm trying to get my head right. The Bible says, casting down imaginations. Cast down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing into captivity, what? Every thought to the obedience of Christ. You mean we can capture thoughts? Yeah. You can capture every fear thought and make it obey what the Word says. But you do not capture thoughts with thoughts. You capture thoughts with words. So if you're thinking all of the fear thoughts, you got to open your mouth up and speak what the Word says. Notice what he says. He says, uh, every thought, bring it to the obedience of Christ. Make it subject to the things of Christ. Make it subject to the Word of God. And you open your mouth to do that. You speak to that fear. You speak what? You speak what the Word says. You speak the promises of God concerning that fear. And when you cast that imagination down, those thoughts will not be able to build in your life. Now, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, you, you're familiar with this. There's a devil loose. There's an enemy that we have. And that enemy has a very clear objective. Get rid of you. Who, who, who believe, who may believe, who thought about believing. Get rid of them. In whom the God of this world, small g, referring to Satan. Now, no, notice what he does for people who don't believe. The Bible says he blinds the minds of them which believe not. There are a lot of blind people in there right now. Dear God, we cannot afford to fall in that trap. God's dependent on us. There's a lot of blind people in earth right now. It's so easy to talk Jesus and talk how much you love him and talk how much faith you got, and then when a real issue show up, there you go. we're going to see sheep and goat. When a real issue show up, that's what I'm saying. There's some preachers that are afraid to even say what I just said. Well, what you trying to say? You know what I'm trying to say. You blind. You can't see. Glory be to God. But we who believe can see. Because you don't understand the greatest accomplishment Satan has ever made is to get you not to believe in it. Come on. Satan ain't trying to get you to believe in him. He can work a lot better when you go around and say, I don't believe in Satan. I don't believe in Satan. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in heaven. I don't believe in nothing. Satan like, ooh, I'm going to tear you up. You don't even know it. Because <laughs> you don't believe nothing. You don't believe nothing. And Satan says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those who believe not and I'm going to blind their minds so that the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who's the image of God, should, should, should shine under them. He says, I don't want them to hear this gospel because if they hear this gospel, I got to blind their mind. I got to blind their mind. The people you know that walk around blind, yeah. hey, they don't have a clue. And my faith is not in men. My faith is in God. Because I'm not going to be going crazy trying to figure out who touched that, who didn't touch that, or, you know, how many times did they wipe? 
Now, we're, we're responsible, whatever you want to say. If you go to our internet, we got a whole list of all the things that are going on in this facility. How it's been wiped down, how it's been disinfected. We use the Georgia facility code to make sure we do all we need to do. Your, your seat's going to be wiped down. Everything's going to be wiped down. We're going to keep doing it. We're using the right kind of stuff that's supposed to kill this and that. And we wiping and we wiping and we wiping. You good while you're here, but I don't, I don't know where you're going after you're going to go here. <laughs> I don't know where it is. But I'm going to make sure you ain't, you ain't going to be able to say, I got some here. <laughs> got hand sanitizer everywhere. <laughs> Children wiping themselves all, all over the place. And then the teens, everybody just wiping themselves down good. <laughs> <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, I don't trust in horses and chariots. I trust in the only one that can help me right now. And what's his name? Jesus. So there's a God of the world. You have an enemy. You have a devil that's loose. And what does he come to do? John chapter 10, 10. I want you to see it. I know you know it, but I want it to go through your eyes and your ears and then come out your mouth, praise God. I'm trying to get you drunk in the spirit this morning. Uh, you somebody say, what's our drink? We drunk some new wine this morning, praise the Lord. The thief, so he calls him a thief. The thief cometh not but for to what? Steal and to what? Kill and to what? Destroy. But he says, I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly to the full until it overflows. Jesus says, don't blame me for the killing, stealing, and destroying. I want to hear nobody talking about the, the, the law must have wanted to come down and pick some lilies out of his garden and bring them out, and that's what happened. No! He says, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, but there is a devil that's loose, and he wants to kill, and he wants to steal, and he wants to destroy. Sometimes we act like God's the only one in the movie. There's some supportive actors. You, <laughs> Satan, your decisions. No, I believe God. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to trust him. How many times have you had to trust God in situations that were rough? How many times had you had to trust him? And how many times did he bring you out? And how many times did he lift you up? And how many times did he take care of it? And how many times did he have your back? Is this any different than any of those times? You need to count your blessings, hallelujah. You need to name them one by one. You need to have a flashback and look at what he's already done. who don't believe, but I'm talking about those of you who've experienced him. I'm not, I'm not here to try to be politically correct. Leave that up to the politicians. I'm not a politician. I am a, I am a Holy Ghost sanctified, Bible-believing, tongue-talking preacher. And I am preaching to those who believe. I am not trying to be politically correct. There is a God that sits high and looks low. There is a God that's given me a promise. There is a God that I have a covenant with. That's what I'm talking about. And I just happen to believe him. I believe God. And I might not be able to change your mind, but I'm here this morning to try to get you to wake up and say, wait a minute, there's no need to be afraid. You have a mighty God. You have a God that saves, a God that heals, a God that delivers, and a God that protects. He's Jehovah. That's all I'm trying to say. Hallelujah. Look at Psalms 103. 
Psalms 103, verse 1 through 7, talks about benefits. <laughs> the Bible says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. It also says that our lives are redeemed from destruction. Fear is not from God. The world offers plenty of opportunities to live in fear, but Christians must learn to completely cast out the emotion of fear. Today's offer, Victory Over Fear, is available for a love gift of 25 US dollars or more. This five message series will provide you with the tools to help you respond in faith to what Jesus has already done. Fear can't even touch you. Every time you think of it or hear a report, it's just the Holy Ghost will rise up on the inside of you and you will remind yourself of who I am. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. I said it and it is so. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm not moved by the reports. I'm moved by the Word of God. I'm moved by the Spirit of God. I'm moved by the Holy Ghost. I'm moved by the power of God. As an added bonus, we have combined today's offer with Creflo Dollar's life-changing book, Overcoming Fear. This combo is available to you for a love gift of 35 US dollars or more. Order this series to activate your faith and cast out fear today. Five Teachers of Grace. Five Days of Fellowship and Worship. A lifetime of victory. Grace Life 2020 featuring Creflo Dollar, Taffy Dollar, Michael Smith, Gregory Dickow, and Andrew Womack. It's eye open, it's heart open, it's just life changing experience. Come see what God's got to tell you. Grace message is just the message for today. They are rightly dividing the word of truth and they care about the hearts and the souls of all people. Don't miss it. We've been to every one of them. Don't miss it. Join us as we bring you Grace Life 2020, July 6th through the 10th. This will be another amazing event and seats will go fast. To register now, text Grace Life to 51555 or visit us at creflodollarministries.org. We will see you soon. One of the major goals of Creflo Dollar Global Missions is to help hurting people physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. We like to take a practical approach to helping those in need in communities all over the world by assisting people directly, as well as supporting organizations that are on the ground changing lives. Visit CreploDollarMinistries.org today and see for yourself how your prayers and financial donations are at work in the lives of thousands. Whether it's through our main campus or fellowship churches, our international offices or mission trips, every day Creflo Dollar Global Missions makes a mark that cannot be erased. To learn more about the work of Creflo Dollar Global Missions, log on to missions.creflodollarministries.org. Thank you for your support. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. 